Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to take a look at Rainbow Six Siege's next DLC titled Black Ice. We have some cool released images here of the JTF2 Canadian operators and what their abilities are. Frost is the first Canadian operator that we have here and her special ability is called Welcome Mat. She uses a mechanical trap to incapacitate enemies. Now it's unclear whether incapacitate means to say knock them down so they need a teammate to revive them or if it'll actually full on kill them. I also imagine she won't need to place her traps on doorways, so she basically will have the entire map available to her, uh, whereas Capcan was limited to doorways, so people on offense are going to have to really keep their eyes open for a lot of booby traps. A team with both Capcans and Frost could be a very annoying to play against. People on Reddit have already been speculating that her traps, since they're mechanical, probably won't show up on IQ Scanner, and they also won't be defeated by Thatcher's EMP grenades, so I imagine and there's going to be a different dynamic to these. Now, how about her weapons? Well, she's got a semi-automatic Super 90 shotgun. It's also very short. I wonder if this means the spread will be greater than a normal shotgun. It's hard to say at this point. And even though it's very small, it can still fit eight shells before needing to reload. Then she also has the submachine gun 9mm C1. This is a really cool weapon. It was made in World War II. It's what the Stormtroopers E11 blasters are basically designed off of. Its magazine can hold 30 34 shots, which is more than you say your MP5. I imagine it's going to be very similar to the other 9mm SMGs in the game, but it does have a pretty slow rate of fire, so it'll be interesting to see how this one stacks up. Next up, we have Buck for the attacking team, and his special ability is called Skeleton Key, and it toggles the underbarrel shotgun attachment on his main weapon. So, yes, he can have a standard assault rifle or a shotgun. You don't have to make a choice now at the beginning of the round. He comes with a 9mm sidearm and he can choose between either stun grenades or breaching charges. One of his primary weapons is the C8 SFW, which is a fancy way of saying Canadian's M4. The stats are very similar to Ash's weapons. In fact, I would imagine it's somewhere between the G36C and the R4C in terms of performance. His next weapon option is the CAMRS, and this is a gun that I'm really excited to see in this game. It's actually the FAL, a iconic battle rifle. Normally this gun does have full auto capabilities, but in game it's set to semi-automatic only. The combination of this weapon plus a shotgun gives you something for long range and short range capabilities. The only downside is that semi-automatic weapons in Rainbow Six almost always lose out to full auto, so I don't see a lot of people choosing this one over the M4. Now between the two operators, I would have to say that Frost is the most interesting because she brings a new gadget to the game that people are going to have to adapt to and it's going to change up gameplay style a bit. As far as Buck goes, I mean, he's not that interesting overall. We already have automatic weapons, we already have shotguns, we already have DMRs. He's not bringing anything new to the game, he's just giving you the option to use two different types of weapons and adapt to the situation maybe a little bit better than other operators could. Now when the DLC hits on February 2nd, everybody's going to get the new Black Ice map for free. Uh, it's a frozen yacht. We have this one concept image of it here or official map image of it here. It's pretty vague, but it looks like there might be a bit of vertical gameplay. Uh, inside of a frozen yacht. Now the two new operators will also be available to everyone. This is kind of a cool way that Ubisoft is doing their DLC. Basically, if you have the season pass, you'll get the two operators unlocked immediately. If you don't have the season pass, they're gonna cost 25,000 renown a piece, which is something that is perfectly attainable if you have just been saving up your renown and not spending it on expensive camos. If you play this game hardcore, that should be something that's very attainable for you. If you play it very casually and don't have a lot of renown, then you might want to think about getting the season pass. Now this new practice of not separating the player base based on what kind of DLCs they've purchased is a great one and I hope many games in the future take the same practice. Giving everyone the map right off the bat for free is great. The operators are just something that's like, hey, you can really work for it if you're a dedicated player and don't have to spend any extra money, or you can spend some extra money and get them right away. Um, I think it's a perfect trade-off. Honestly, it doesn't feel like it's a pay-to-win game in any way. The new operators are cool, but it's not necessarily going to keep you from doing well in Rainbow Six if you don't have them. Now, the one downside to this first Black Ice DLC is the fact that it's only long watching one map, and there's already a bunch of maps in Rainbow Six Siege that I don't really like. I think everybody kind of universally groans when we get to the Oregon map or just some of the lesser popular maps in this game, and so if Black Ice is not a good map pack, then that's going to suck because there's only one map to choose from. I think 
It would have been smarter if they at least had two maps. I realize that these maps are far more involved than your average uh, first-person shooter map because there's so much destruction and strategy that goes into the planning of them. I just hope the yacht map is actually good, because if it's not, that's going to be a bit of a letdown. In addition to that, I foresee a problem with people wanting to play the new map, but not being able to because of the map selection problems in this game. You can't really effectively choose what maps that you want to play. There's no vote map option. There's no matchmaking setting like in Counter-Strike where you can say, oh, I only want to play like Dust 2 or Mirage, and then you just play those maps. So there's no way to do that in this game. And since there's going to be 12 maps when this new one comes out, you're going to play this new map one out of every 12 matches, statistically speaking. So it could be a while before you actually get to experience the new map. And I think this is something that Ubisoft needs to address pretty quickly. If they allowed you to pick your top four or top five maps, I think this would be a pretty good way about going through some of the map filtering. So you don't have to play the maps you don't like. Anyway, really looking forward to the launch of this first Rainbow Six Siege DLC. Excited for more content coming to the game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.